Potatoes have to be one of my most favourite things to grow and I'm often asked questions based around sprouting or chitting potatoes. So in this video, I'm going to answer all of those questions based around sprouting or chitting potatoes and whether or not it's worth it. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening. If you love growing your own food like I do, then you will have already thought about growing potatoes or even you've ordered your potatoes and you're waiting to grow them. So in order to guarantee you get them, you have to buy them early and typically seed merchants send them out in early January. Now, this is way too early to plant your potatoes out because the frost will kill them where they stand. Now, one of the questions I'm often asked is, well, if I have to buy my potatoes so early, what do I do with the potatoes before I can plant them? Well, the answer to that is sprouting your potatoes. So to sprout your potato is the uh, same as chitting. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to say sprouting. So just for clarification, what is sprouting potatoes and does it really help? Well, potatoes grow from tubers and these tubers have little eyes on them and from these eyes shoots grow. Those shoots will eventually turn into the top growth of the plant. And as far as does it really help? Well, this has been argued for generations, but um, there are lots of benefits to sprouting that you will see later on. What I will say right this second is for first and second early potatoes, which are determinates, then it uh, does help because typically we would need the soil to be warm when we plant them out and it's not at the time of planting for these types of potatoes the soil is still quite cool so by sprouting them you uh, get a little speed up and get that process going whereas if you plant them directly into the soil they'll just sit there for a little while until that soil warms up and there's a possibility that they could rot main crop potatoes or indeterminate potatoes otherwise known well they possibly don't really benefit because they don't go in the ground until it's already warmed up however there are still other benefits around uh, sprouting these potatoes also that you will find out later in this video so the next question I get asked is do farmers sprout their potatoes well the obvious answer to that is a no and this is threefold and the first reason for that is that firstly they don't have the space to lay out tons and tons of potatoes in order to chit them secondly they don't have the time because the farmer can't be wasting time just laying out all these potatoes it's quite a time costing uh, that they just don't have and thirdly they actually produce on mass so they just go out and they lay out hundreds and hundreds of hectares of fields with potatoes and they will just harvest whatever grows uh, for them it's more cost effective to do it that way now at home we have that time in order to lay out the potatoes and make sure that they are sprouting correctly we have the space in order to lay them out because we are not laying out tons of potatoes and then we also have um, a limited amount of space in which to grow so we can't plant on mass so for us we need to um, expand the yield that we get from the potatoes that we plant so sprouting is definitely worth it the next question i get is so when do i start sprouting my potatoes well, as we've already discussed, you need to go and buy your seed potatoes early. Otherwise, you just don't get the varieties that you want. And if you've ordered online, as we've already said, the seed merchants, they send them out typically in January. So this is way too early in which to plant them. So the idea is to sprout them at that time. So the ideal time to start sprouting is the day you get your potatoes. Don't leave them in the netted bags or the, the paper bags they come in. Get them straight out and sprouting straight away. Now the act of sprouting, well that keeps your sea potatoes fresh and um, viable. Now if you were to just leave these in the bag, then by the time of planting out, you would have long white spindly shoots. But more on this a bit later. Well the next question is, what would be the best 
sized seed potato for sprouting and the answer for that is a large egg size and the reason for this is that the seed potato would have enough energy in which to push out those shoots but also um, would have multiple eyes on that potato so that you can get a good size plant and enough tubers. This is really easy if you keep your own seed potatoes because you can select the perfect size ones from the potatoes that you're keeping back. Not so easy if you're ordering online because you are governed by whatever comes in that netted bag. You see, you have no control over the size of the tubers that they they put in and typically they don't particularly care they just want you to buy them as seed potatoes now um, you are much better if you're able to visit a garden center and select them manually from each of the uh, buckets that they have and that way you can pick your own potato size there smaller than egg size well you're going to have an issue with vigor and you won't get such a good plant from it and larger an egg size well you can have issues with that as well because on larger potatoes you have more eyes so the plant will send up a lot more shoots the issue with this is that you get a lot more potatoes but they are much smaller now this is okay for like first and second earlies or uh determinate potatoes but for main crop or indeterminate potatoes then you want to be able to control the size of the potatoes you're getting now by keeping them at large egg size well you're going to get two or three sprouts from this potato and that's adequate for good sized potatoes but if you get larger potatoes in your bag, you can cut them in half. Just allow one or two shoots per piece and allow these to dry for a couple of days before planting. The other good thing about this is that once it's wet, you could possibly dip those cut ends into hardwood ash and this will help to heal over that potato and provide a potassium for them at a later stage and a top tip here you can control the size of your potatoes that you want if you want larger potatoes or if you want smaller potatoes and that's all to do with the sprouts that you allow to continue to grow if you want larger potatoes limit your seed potato to just two sprouts and that way it will put up enough homes so that it will provide the plant the energy it requires but it will give you the largest potatoes if you want smaller but more potatoes allow more eyes to form into sprouts and that will put up a lot more green growth at the top or more foliage and then it will produce a lot more potatoes but they will be smaller in nature and that is one of the best tips you're ever going to get on sprouting potatoes. Just a note though, don't do this on first or second earlies or determinate potatoes because these potatoes are small potatoes anyway and the idea behind those is you get lots of potatoes. So there's no need to reduce the sprouts on those potatoes, only your main crop or indeterminates. So sprouting potatoes, this is really straightforward. Now, when you look at a potato, it has two ends. It has the rose end and the eye end. Now, the rose end is where the potato was attached to the mother plant and there's a little scar there. And the eye end, well, they usually appear at the other end of the potato. And it's the eye ends that we need to plant facing up. But to order to chit them, what we need to do is place these potatoes eyes facing up into some sort of tray or into some egg cartons, anything like that, that is able to hold them in that upright position. And then we need to place these trays in a bright, frost-free, cool location. Now, it's no good putting them somewhere warm and dark, but bright, frost-free and cool. That's the really important part here. So a south facing window at home in an unheated room would be perfect. A greenhouse as long as you can ensure it's frost free. Um, anywhere really, even a garage as long as it's got some sort of lighting and it can be remained frost free. That's the important bit here is frost free, cool and bright. The best temperatures for chitting your potatoes will last 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you can keep it around that, that'll be perfect for them because that will give them shoots 
everything it requires nice bright light and a warm enough temperature just to get going but we don't want it too warm if you have it too warm the shoots are going to grow too tall so keep that nice and cold we want short stumpy shoots so can you sprout your potatoes in the dark the answer to this is no I'm sure many of you have been into your kitchen cupboards and pulled out a bag of shop-bought potatoes that have been left in the dark in a warm room and they've sprouted and you've had long white spindly shoots. Now the reason for this is that those shoots, when the potatoes were sprouting, they were looking for light and they went in search of light so they were long looking for this light but the other thing about it is that there was no color in it because they didn't get the light that they required now those spindly shoots are no good to you so these growths are not very good if you were to plant those potatoes so the best thing you can do is snap them off because they've just wasted that sort of energy from the potato tuber so um you know because they've had that energy and it's grown you put it in soil they're not going to get the best of homes what we want is nice short stumpy shoots so what we need to do is break those off and re-sprout those potatoes and they will re-sprout just go through the whole process like we've already explained and make sure they're in cool uh, bright and frost free and you'll be fine with them yesterday i was asked if you could sprout green potatoes and there is no issue with sprouting green potatoes. The potato itself is just an energy source in order to get those eyes to sprout. After that point, it's done its job. So the color of his skin doesn't really make a difference. Now, if we were to eat green potatoes, then that could be bad for us. But when you're using them to grow, it's not an issue. So if your seed potatoes come and they're green, it's not a problem, just chit them as normal. So how long does it take to chit your potatoes? Well, if we've already discussed, you get your potatoes early January. So the ideal thing is to put them out to chit straight away. Now, chitting usually takes around about six weeks, which is ideal um, when you consider that after those six weeks, you could potentially be planting them out, especially if you plant them as I do here. You now know all there is to know about sprouting potatoes and whether or not it's worth sprouting them. If you've got value from this video, you can subscribe here. And when you've done that, if you wanna know how to grow the best potatoes possible and get fantastic results, well, this is the next video you should watch. So go and watch it now. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.